OK, this is unit four, lesson two. What does an equation have that an expression does not have? Can somebody answer that? Taylor. An equal sign. So I, I gave some hints this morning to the students this morning, and, and they were having a hard time with it. I, I want you to equation equal. OK, so there's an equal sign, right? An expression, there's two types of expressions. What are the two types of expressions? Can somebody tell me one of the types, Lola? Um, algebraic. An algebraic expression. OK, that's one of them. What's the other one? Who's got the other one, Anissa? Numerical. Numerical expression. OK, and then for the second part of the warm-up, it says evaluate each expression for p equals 2. So for numbers 2 through 5, what type of expressions do we have here? Who can tell me what type of expressions are these? Trinity? Algebraic. Why did you say algebraic? Because there is no variable. There's at least one variable there. Okay. And so the opposite of that is if there are no variables and it's just numbers and operations, it's a numerical expression. Okay. So all we're doing is we're substituting. For p, what value? Two. two. So can somebody tell me what problem number two is going to be if I replace p with two and simplify that? What's it going to be? Adipoju? It'll be two plus seven, and that's going to that's going to be nine if I simplify that expression all the way. Okay. So what about for number three? Who's got that one? Nathan. It'll be three times two. Three times two. And that simplifies to what? Six. Good. Who's got number four? Henry? Two minus one. Two minus one, and that equals one. And who's got the last one, number five? Can I get a volunteer? Somebody I haven't heard from. A day? Twelve minus two is ten. Very good. Okay, so since um, I want to post this to the message board, I haven't been able to make the video yet. I'm going to go and read this. What you'll learn. To find solutions of linear equations and to graph linear equations. Well, we've already done that. Okay? So this is going to feel like a, a bit of review for you guys. All right? So new vocabulary. Graph of an equation and linear equations. So what does a linear equation look like? Kalila. It looks like a line. It's a line. That's why it's called a linear equation. So these are things we've already talked about a, a little bit earlier, right? Okay? So why learn this? Sometimes you can use an equation to describe a relationship between two quantities. Graphing the equation can make the relationship easier to see. To make a swing, you need enough rope to reach the branch plus 5 feet to tie the rope. You can use y equals x plus 5 to describe the relationship between the number of feet, x, the tire hangs below the branch, and the number of feet y, the rope you need. Okay? A solution of a linear equation is any ordered pair that makes the equation true. To find a solution, choose a value of x and substitute it into the equation, then find the corresponding value of y. So if we look at this equation and we want to find three solutions, now for a linear equation, there are infinitely many solutions. For every number I pick, I can pick another number. Does that make sense? And so if I could pick a different number, that means I would get a different output. Does, do you guys understand? So if they ask you for three solutions, all you got to do is pick three x's and find out the y's that go with them. And then you got three different solutions. Got it? OK. But now, what does it mean to be a solution? Let's talk about these solutions here. And then I want to talk about what's not a solution. OK. So if you look at the table, in the first column, I got the value of x. In the second column, I got the algebraic expression that equals y. And in the third column, I have what y is equal to if I substitute for x. So for my first value of x, I have 6. 6 plus 5 gave me back 11. So the solution that makes this equation true is 6 comma 11. That is, a, that is a solution. You understand? I need both those numbers to give me my solution. Does that make sense? Now, 
if I was to give you, uh, let's go ahead and go through these solutions. So 7, if I substitute 7 into my equation, I should get back 12 for my y. So 7 comma 12 is my other, another solution, okay? And then similarly for 8, x equals 8, if I replace y with 8, or x with 8, I get back 13 for y. So 8 comma 13 is another solution. Now, how about this? What if I gave you, um, can you guys tell me Is this a solution? Why wouldn't it be a solution? If I replace 9 for x, what am I supposed to get back for y? 14. 14, but I have 9 comma 16. So guess what? This is not a solution. So sometimes they'll ask you, they'll give you a, a an ordered pair or a coordinate, and they'll say, is this a solution to the equation? And the way you check that out is you substitute into the, the equation, and if it's true, you'll get back a true va a value that's equal, right? It'll be my equation will balance. If I substitute my x, I'll get back the correct y. You guys saw right away that if I put in 9, I don't get back 16, do I? So this is not a solution. And so if we were to graph this linear function, we'd have a line, and this would be a point that that is it going to be on the line? 9, 16, is that going to be on the line? No, it's, it's going to be off the line somewhere, so it's not a solution. So all the solutions of an equation, a linear equation, those points will all be collinear. That means they would be in the same line. They would be a solution to that line. Okay? So let's move on. All right, here's what I'd like for you guys to do. I want you to find three solutions for each equation. Here are my three values of x. So they're giving you the value of, values of x. They're saying, hey, here are my x values. Give me the solutions that go with these x values. So come up with your solutions. They're telling you the inputs. You need to find out the outputs so you can give me the solutions. So for this equation, y equals x plus 8. You're going to give me three solutions. For this equation in the middle, y equals x minus 1, you're going to give me three solutions. And same for the last equation. Okay, so really quickly get that done. And there's some things I want to talk about that relate to the last unit. So work these out so I can make some connections to the things we have already discussed.
So what are my solutions to the first equation? So if I put in negative 2, what do I get back for my y? Negative what? Negative 6? It's just going to be 6. Because a negative 2 plus 8, use the number line in the classroom if you need it. OK, who's got the next solution for when x is 0? What's it going to be? 8. Very good. And then my third solution, what's that going to be? So if I substitute 2, I get back a 10. OK. And for the middle equation, what's my first solution going to be for x equals 2? What do I get back? If I'm at neg I heard it, negative 3. Who said it over here? Negative 3. Very good. Listen, shh, because some of you guys are fuzzy on your rules. If I'm at negative 2 and I take one more, look at the number line. If I'm at negative 2 and I take away one more, which way am I going? I'm going to the left 1, so that puts me at what spot? Negative 3. OK, so for x equals 0, what do I get back? Negative 1. OK, and then my last solution for x equals 2, what do I get back? Positive 1. OK, now the last equation. Who can tell me the first solution? What is it? Negative 4. Very good. You guys remembered your rules. Multiplying a negative times a positive gives you back a negative. OK, so what about x equals 0? What do I get back from my y? I get back 0. Very good. So 0, 0. And what do we call that point? What do we call that coordinate? The origin. Very good. Nice. And then if I substitute 2 in for x, what do I get back from my y? I get positive 4. Very good. So here's the table values that go with these. Okay. That's just to give you guys an understanding where my, my numbers come from. Okay. Do you have a question about this? Okay. In a moment, I want to finish this first. Yep. OK, after him, when I'm ready. OK, so here we go. These are the solutions that we just discussed above. Now, here is the, here is the same equation we talked about earlier with the swing. OK, I have some more values in here. But what I wanted to show you guys, um, it says, hey, we're going to graph the solution to this equation that we mentioned earlier. But then the other thing is, they want to ask, is 9.13 a solution to this equation? OK? And so what I want to show you is what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. And here's the graph. And I want you guys to notice a few things. So I already have the graph here. So here's the graph. Here's the equation. If you notice. I put all the points from the chart on my line. They are linear. But the point 913, do you see how it's not on the line? Do you guys see that? OK. That's not a solution. Do you understand what it means if something's not a solution to a linear equation? That means it won't be on the line that connects all the solutions. Do you understand? OK, so you have to understand. You need to comprehend that, because they're going to ask you a question about that. So the other thing I need you to recognize is if you take a look at this point right here, OK? What is the name of that point? Name that coordinate. It's 0 and 5. You guys remember yesterday I was telling you where, where I've seen a lot of students mess up on that. It's 0, 5, right? Because I don't go left or right, but I raise to number 5 on the y direction, so 0, 5. Now, the reason why I wanted to point this out to you, because we're going to get to this later, and I want to point it out now. That's not a coincidence that we see in the graph plus 5, and it's 0, 5, right? Because if I substitute 0 for x, what do I get back? 5, OK? This has a special name, and it comes from what's happening in the picture. What's happening between this line and the y-axis? They're intersecting, but now I want you to think about the name that they call that number, that number in that equation. It's called the y inter Set. Okay, we're going to be getting to that later in this unit. Now, the other thing I want you to notice in front of the x, 
I don't have a number, but I could put a number in front of any variable, right? What number can I put in front of any variable? Savannah, what is it? It's 1. Isn't 1 times x the same as x? Right. So something I want you guys to, to notice is if I go from one point to the other, this direction is what? If I go to the right, is that a positive or a negative? Positive. So I just went to the right positive 1. And then watch, I'm going to go up. How many did I? Up is what, what sign? Positive. That's a positive. It's a positive, positive 1 this way. So if I have positive 1 over positive 1, what I get is 1. And that's not a coincidence either. This is called the slope. Okay, And we're going to get to that later. And we're going to learn how to calculate that. But I want to show you some things that you can pull out just from looking at the equation. I'm going to, I'm going to show you some more examples before it starts sinking in what's going on. If we backtrack to the last couple examples, what is the y-intercept here? What's the y-intercept? Where does it cross the y-axis for this first equation? 0, 8. Very good. 0, 8 is the y-intercept. Okay, I'm just going to abbreviate there. Now over here, what's the y-intercept for the second equation? 0, negative 1. That's where the graph will cross here, the y-axis at 0, negative 1. So that's the y-intercept here for this equation. And then this one's kind of tricky. What's the y-intercept when I have an equation like this? Nice, I heard it. Do you guys remember when we came up with our rules? We, we figured out the common difference, and we made that our coefficient in front of x. And then if it worked, I left it. But if not, I had to make an adjustment. Do you guys remember that? But if it worked, that means it went through the origin. So here, it's 0, comma, 0. The origin is my y-intercept. Okay. Now the other thing I want you to notice, my slope for this equation is 1. Same thing for this equation is 1. My slope for this equation is 2. Okay. Now, these two lines have the same slope. That means they're the same steepness, except for this one crosses at 8 higher above than this one that crosses at negative 1. Okay. They're parallel lines. This equation right here, because 2 is greater than 1, it'll be a steeper line. Okay. So we're going to look at some graphs here in a moment so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right, so tell whether 7, 12 is a solution of the equation. Well, if we plug it in, is it a solution? No, because if I substitute 7 into that equation, I get back 20. Now, what is the y-intercept of this equation? What's the y-intercept of this equation? Come on. Look at the equation. What is it? Y-intercept. Not 1. I don't see a 1 there. I see something else. Negative 1. Thank you. So the y-intercept equals 0, negative 1. Now, what's my slope? How steep is my line? What number do I look at that tells me how steep my line is? The 3, right? So this 3 is important. This is the slope. And 3 means, we're going to see what 3 means here in a second. So now let's look at my graph down here. Here I have my graph. And what's, this, what's the y-intercept of this graph? What is it? 0, 1. So the y-intercept equals 0, comma, 1. And that's without even putting points. And my slope is what? My slope is 2. That's my slope. OK, the other one was 3. This one's 2. Now let's take a look at the graph. Watch the graph. Because this is where I want you guys to start seeing what's up. Do you see that? Look at where I crossed the y-axis. Isn't that the, isn't that the, the y-intercept? 0, 1. Okay. Now slope. Watch how I calculate slope. I want you to take a look at this. So from one point to the other, it doesn't matter which point. I could use um, this to this point. As long as I'm using two points, I can use that to get a ratio that is equal to the slope. So watch this. I'm going to use these two points. So I just went to the right how many places? One, two, three. So this is plus three in that direction. OK, and then to get to this point up here, I'm going to go how many this direction? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I went plus six this way, right? 
So watch, I'm going to make a fraction out of the rise over the run. Rise is up and down, run is sideways. That equals plus 6 over plus 3, and that equals 2, which is my slope. OK? So I'm trying to show you guys more ways to graph these functions than just using a t-chart. Okay, that's going to be a lesson later, but I'm just trying to build your background knowledge before we get there. Okay, so I feel like a lot of this lesson, you guys know how to graph linear functions from the equation. I feel like you're good with that. So I'm just trying to get you guys ready for what's coming up soon. Okay, so moving on. Graph each linear function. So we have three functions here. Now I want you guys to go ahead really quickly. What is the y-intercept of this first equation? It's not four. It's two. It's a point. It's a coordinate. What is it? It is 0, 4. Okay. How about the y-intercept for this one? If I put in 0 for x, what do I get back for y? 0 times a half is a half. 0, 0 is the origin. OK, and then what about this one? What's the y-intercept for this last equation? I'm hearing some people whispering it. Who can raise their hand and volunteer that I haven't heard yet? Where is this graph going to cross the y-axis? You can always figure that out by substituting 0 for x. Lola? If I put a 0 in for x, I get back negative 2. What do I get back? Oh, we answer this question, and then you could head out. What do I get back? If you guys have your sign-out sheet. What is it? Kalila, tell him. It's going to be 0, 0 again. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first function. My slope for this one is 1. Slope for this one's a half. Slope for this one is actually a negative 1. So the first and the last one have the same slope, but one's positive, one's negative. So there's the same steepness, but one leans one way, one leans the other way. This one, a half, is less than 1, so it's not going to be as steep as the first equation. So if you take a look, my first equation, take a look at where it intercepts the y-axis. Isn't that, isn't that what we just set up above? Not even graphing it or using the table? 0, 4, right? OK, for the next one, where did it cross? What did we say? Didn't we say 0, 0 for this one? Look at where it crosses. It crosses at the origin, 0, comma, 0, right? Now look at the last one. Where did we say that one's going to cross? We said that was going to cross at the origin also. But look at which way it's going now. Do you guys see the direction it's headed? It's leaning to the left now instead of the right because it's negative. So as my x's increase, my y's decrease. It's negative. Now look at the number in front of x. The number in front of x is a negative 1. This one's positive. This one's positive. The first two are positive because they lean to the right. So as x increases, y increases. Now, what I want to show you is for the first one, let's calculate my rise and run. How many units did I move to the right? Plus 2. How many units did I move to the next coordinate? Up. Plus 2. So if I take the rise over the run, that equals 2 over 2, and that equals what? 1. Isn't that what I have in front of my, isn't that what I have right here? OK. Now let's look at the next one. So I have this coordinate, the origin, to the next coordinate. How many units did I move to the right? Plus 2. And then how many units did I move up? Plus 1. So guess what? I have my rise over my run, and that equals 1 over 2, which is, isn't that what we have? A half? One half. I can't simplify that any further. I leave it as a fraction. A half. Are we good? And then the last one, this is negative, so I want you guys to pay attention to this one. So if you look, if you look at this last equation, so watch what's happening. I go from this point, I, d I dropped, right? That's minus 2. And then I go to this side, how many? Plus 2. 
And I need to fix this. this I made a. That's dropping. That's minus two. So look, if I take my rise, my rise is minus two, right? And my run is a positive two. So it's minus two over positive two. And we have different signs, and we divide them. What do we get back? A negative. So what's two divided by two? One. So it's negative one. Isn't that my my slope again? Okay. Last slide of the day. What does the graph of the solution of a linear equation look like? A straight line. OK. Use the equation y equals x minus 7 for the following questions. Complete the table. Well, I already completed the table. Now, if they want you to find three solutions, pick out any three x's. Try to pick easy x's. Don't pick like big numbers. Just pick easy ones. Substitute them. Get your y. There's your solution. So I chose these. 0. 0 is the easy one. If you choose 0 for x, that will always give you back what? No. no, I gave you a special name for that. It's where it crosses the y-axis. The y-intercept. So if you put in 0 for x, that always tells you where your line crosses the y-axis. Got it? So this is going to cross the y-axis at 0, negative 7. Now then I chose some other numbers, 5 and 6. And so I got, and actually this is should be a 5. And this one should be a 6. OK. Now let me go and graph this. And that should be a 5 and a 3. OK. So we already said it's going to cross through 0, negative 7. Here's my first coordinate. OK. 5, I have negative 2. That's my other one. And then at 6, I'm at negative 1. So if I draw my line, it's going to look something like that. Okay. Now, if I was to calculate my slope, there's my run. How many units did I go to the right? 5, five plus 5. Okay. And then if I go rise, how many units did I go up? From here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 5. OK? So that means my slope is what? Slope is, this, is the fraction that's the rise over the run, right? So that's going to be 5 over 5, which equals 1. And that's a positive 1. And isn't the coefficient in front of my equation a 1? OK. 